On behalf of the Department of Pharmacy, the National University of Singapore, I would like to welcome all prospective students and their parents and friends. I'm Christina Chai, and I'm the head of Department of Pharmacy. We are living in extraordinary times. Towards the end of last year, we have heard of the extreme bushfires in Australia, followed by floods. And since the beginning of this Lunar New Year, the world faces a health threat from the coronavirus known as COVID-19. So what do we know about the future? Not much by the look of it. And yet in the next few months, you will have to decide on your future, what you would like to do in a university in this age of the VUCA world. Almost every job has evolved and some jobs have become obsolete while new types of jobs are being created. But what is constant about the future is that we will always be concerned about health and diseases. The understanding of the sciences of diseases and indirectly how to keep healthy. The discovery of new medicines for treatment of illnesses that is not even known yet. The management of medications, the regulation of medicines and so on. This is the pharmaceutical world. This is what NUS Pharmacy is about. It is about you and me and the future generation. It is about making an impact and a difference. In this segment of the presentation, my colleagues, Professor Paul Gallagher and Professor Chui Wai Kiong will explain what a pharmacist does and what we offer in terms of the undergraduate program leading to becoming a pharmacist. As my colleague, Professor Chai said, we live in uncertain times, but there is also much to celebrate not least the healthcare system that we enjoy here in Singapore. And that's evidenced by the increase in life expectancy, which for 2020 has increased even further. So why is our healthcare system so successful? Lots of reasons, including number one, public health, two, better healthcare professionals, and three, and by no means least, medicines. Medicines have simply transformed healthcare. In 1905, when the department was established here in the National University of Singapore, if I had a peptic ulcer, I possibly would have needed open surgery, which is risky. Now I don't need that risky surgery. Medicines will relieve my symptoms and even cure the ulcer. But medicines aren't magic bullets. Medicines carry both benefits and risks. And it takes a highly skilled professional to carefully balance those benefits and risks for each patient at any given particular time. In a nutshell, that's what a pharmacist is. The pharmacist is the member of the healthcare team who knows most about medicines. And as medicines become more critical to healthcare, the role of the pharmacist becomes more important. So how would we in NUS educate you for such an important role. Let me tell you that through a case study. Case studies we use frequently in education of healthcare professionals to illustrate a point or a set of principles. So we're in a polyclinic, which we're referring to as an ambulatory care clinic. Mr. HP, we're using acronyms because we want to protect his identity, is a 46-year-old Chinese male who presents to the pharmacist. He's got a history of poor glucose control, and he's also got high lipids. The medication that he's taking is called Losartan at a dose of 50 milligram, which he takes once daily to control his blood pressure. But the problem is that he's now presenting with blood pressure that isn't normal. It's actually higher than it should be, which we call elevated blood pressure. And he's looking for the pharmacist to solve the problem. And on questioning, the pharmacist finds he stopped taking his medication. In fact, he stopped taking it two weeks ago because he got a fright. And he got a fright because of media reports that the medication could cause cancer. What on earth? You may recall about one year ago, the Health Science Authority here in Singapore recalled a medicine called Losartan because it had a concern that in the manufacturing process, there was some contamination with something called nitrosapines, which can cause cancer, be carcinogenic. 
As a result, the HSA, which is a duty to the safety of all Singaporeans, withdrew the medicine. That was reported on TV, and in his local Chinese newspaper, he read the headline, got a fright and understandably stopped, but didn't go to the pharmacist to say what to do next. So how does the pharmacist make an effective intervention? What has he to do to ensure blood pressure control is re-established, that the person's confidence is established, and that there are no risks from the new medicine? So let's, as it were, get inside the mind of a pharmacist. What are the skills and knowledge that they need to have to be able to do that effectively? They need to have knowledge of pharmaceutical biology and pharmacokinetics. What does that mean? Simply, they need to know what is the effect of the body on the drug, and separately, what is the effect of the drug on the body? They need to understand dosage forms in pharmaceutical technology. This is formulated as a tablet versus other types of dosage forms. And of course, chemistry is critical. They need to understand the chemistry of the drug and how that interferes with the pharmaceutical technology. So understanding all of that, the pharmacist can make an effective intervention, which we call medication therapy management. And what does that mean? It means, firstly, Mr. HP is reassured that there's no need for a cancer test. Two, he's taken off the Losartan because of the recall from HSA. He's substituted on a drug from a similar class, but at a dose which is going to be equivalent to give a similar reduction in blood pressure. And thirdly, and remember what I said about risks. So this new drug is also, as well as the benefits, going to carry risks. Some of the risks here are affecting kidney function by reducing it and increasing potassium. So to control that risk, the pharmacist is going to bring him back in two weeks' time, measure his blood pressure, but also measure his potassium and estimate his kidney function. So how do we prepare you to have such knowledge and skills? That's a tall order. My colleague, Professor Wai Kyung Chui, now explains. My colleague, Professor Gallagher, has used a case study to show you how pharmacists is able to use a special body of knowledge to help his patient manage medication. So how do you acquire that special body of knowledge? Let me show you some aspects of the program. The pharmacy program is a four-year program. Uh, when you come into the program, you will be exposed to foundational sciences, and you will learn about system science, and that's where you learn the different physio physiological system, and if something goes wrong with them, how to manage it. You will also be sent to hospitals, community pharmacies, to have some experiential learning. After four years, you will go into a period of training known as pre-registration training. This will be six months long. And after which you have successfully completed the six months training, you can be registered with the Singapore Pharmacy Council as a registered pharmacist. And as a pharmacist, you still need to continue with your learning. Your learning doesn't stop there. And that's where lifelong learning comes into play. When you walk into a classroom and learn about the different physiological systems and how to manage the system when, it, when something has gone wrong with it, this is what you will learn. First, you learned about the health uh, sciences, uh, using understanding the anatomy, the physiology of the system. And then you learned about medication and what is the chemistry behind the medication, what are their properties, and how they are made into different dosage forms. And with these dosage forms, and when you use them in patients, what are the good effects and what are the bad effects? And how does the pharmacist balance the good and the bad effects to help patients recover from the disease? And this is how we integrate the basic sciences, the clinical sciences, as well as system sciences to help manage patients' condition. We are living in the world of technology. You can see that all around us, there are a lot of devices and technology uh, in action. Even in pharmacy practice, there are a lot of processes that are digitalized as well as uh, assisted by technology. So if we need to be functioning in this kind of world, we need to understand the technology and how they work. 
so that we can maximize the use of these technology. But at the same time, as a pharmacist, we need to interact with our patients. So we need to have that quality of um, patient care uh, and also empathy for patients. Right? So these two areas together form the humanics. Right? And in humanics, there are three different areas that we can look at. First of all, is technological literacy, data literacy, and finally, the human literacy. In technological literacy, we will try to instill in you some knowledge of mathematics, coding, as well as basic engineering principles so that you understand how the technologies work and how you can optimize the technologies, the technologies to help you manage your patient. At the same time, uh, along the way, you will be gathering a lot of data. Data is useless unless you make them into useful information. And this useful information can help you make clinical decision. And that's why you need data literacy. And finally, because of your interaction with patients, you need to be able to communicate effectively with them, not only your patient, but also with your co-workers. So in humanics, you learned about this um, different types of literacy such that you know, the human and the technology can coexist together. And that is how we robot prove you for the future. When you come into the program, what, how do you go about learning all these different uh, inf information and also uh, topics? All right. We use an approach that is quite different from what you're used to from school. Um, it's going to be very student-centric. You will be the focal point. We want to make sure that you are able to learn and apply what you've learned in the class. At the same time, we like you to uh, develop that self-directed learning habit. Right? This is so important because as you become a professional, self-directed learning is something that will help you to learn things on your own. And finally, experiential learning is something that is also important because we allow you to socialize with all the different healthcare workers so that you have a feel about how to go about interacting with uh, your co-workers in the future. As well as some of the professional activities that you will be uh, exposed to and you bring those things into the back into the class and that's where you learned uh, even better with your experiential uh, learning. And in the classroom, or before even you step into the classroom, you have to do a bit of homework. And that can be done uh, on an individual basis or with your classmates. And this is what we call e-learning. And e-learning could be in the form of either reading some materials, watching some videos. And these are uh, all, the very, uh, all the information that you need to know before you step into the classroom. And when you step into the classroom, the professor will be there to, to find out whether you've understood what you've read. So the classroom sessions are going to be very interactive. And finally, we'll move into a collaborative learning workshop. And this is where you will apply your knowledge to solve problems. And these problems could be real life problems taken from the clinics, for example. Pharmacy practice is very much based on science. And the best way to learn about science is through experimentation and through inquiry. And in most of the modules that you will be undertaking will have a practical component. And this is where you walk into the laboratory, do some experiments, collect some data, and then you find out how, to, uh, how some of these scientific principles work. So this is, again, another important essential uh, component uh, in your learning. At the same time, uh, while you're learning about the science, you also need to learn about how to manage your patient, how to look after the patient, and that's where pharmacy practice comes into play. Pharmacy practice skills come into play. Uh, for example, patient counselling, how do you compound some of this medication, and how do you look after special population patients such as the diabetic patients. So this is where you learn uh, the different skill sets. I mentioned about experiential learning, all right? You have quite a big dose of those uh, in the form of pre-employment clinical training, all right? There will be six months of that uh, in the program and you will be sent to different 
workplaces for this attachment. At the same time, towards the end of the program, you will do a capstone discovery project. And this is where you will put everything together and learn uh, everything that you've learned in terms of the basic sciences, the clinical sciences, to try and solve uh, a problem uh, which has some research basis. So at the end of the day, uh, we hope that you will acquire characteristics such as uh, the collaborator, the communicator, scholar, innovator, leader, manager, professional, and health advocate. And all these are towards becoming a care provider as a pharmacist. Coming into a pharmacy program is not all work and no play. Right? You can participate in a lot of student-led activities. Therefore, there is quite a vibrant student life in NUS as well, and in, as well as in NUS pharmacy. At the same time, you could also participate in community engagement activities, such as healthcare screening, for example. Uh, these are some of the activities you could, work, uh, you could do with medical students, dental students, nursing students as well. After graduation, and when you get registered with the Singapore Pharmacy Council, right, you can join the register, which currently has about over 3,000 registered pharmacists. And as a registered pharmacist, you could be working in the community, either in the retail pharmacy or in the polyclinic, or you could be working in the hospital, or you could also work in pharmaceutical company uh, looking into um, marketing, clinical trials, uh, regulatory affairs, manufacturing. Right? So these are the, all the different career opportunities that are open to you as a pharmacy graduates. So the critical question, am I suitable for pharmacy, you may ask. Uh, let's take a look at some of this question. I have background in chemistry and enjoy the subject. Uh, this is important because chemistry is a prerequisite subject for uh, uh, application to pharmacy. So if you have the chemistry uh, from A-levels or from other uh, programs, you could have a tick for yes. I'm excited at the possibility of integrating science with clinical practice. This is what the new program can offer to you. That's where you learn to integrate uh, the different sciences to help manage uh, your patient. I would like a career where I can play a part to improve the quality of healthcare. Um, as a pharmacist, uh, uh, pharmacist is also an important, uh, uh, play an important role in the healthcare system. Uh, so this is something that will fulfill that aspiration. And finally, I love interactions with people and I want to help them, right? So as a pharmacist, you can do that for sure, right? You will be looking after the medication needs of of, uh, your, of your patients. So if your answer to these questions um, are yes for most of it, right, you could be suitable for pharmacy. And if you want to apply to pharmacy, what can you do? Right? Uh, depending on your background, uh, whether you come from A-levels, from the IB programs, or from high school, for example, right, these are the different uh, requirements. Or when you come from a polytechnic, program, all right, you have different uh, admission requirements. So you can get, have more details, uh, you can look up more details at our website. And finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to follow us at the different social medias and you can have more information uh, on the website. And on that note, on behalf of Professor Christina Chai and Professor Paul Gallagher, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you soon.